could you imagine with me for a moment that you're sitting somewhere on a Friday afternoon at 2.30, your phone rings, you don't recognize the number, but you answer it and you hear a rather cold voice on the phone. And the voice says, hello, I'm Dr. Smith. That breast biopsy you had, we found a tumor, it's cancer. Your mind goes blank, your heart starts to race, your fingers go numb, you think about your daughter, you think about your husband, you think about your life. And that phone call, you manage to make an appointment with that breast surgeon, plus two more, three oncologists and three radi radiation oncologists. And at the end of two weeks, this is what you know. Your invasive lobular breast cancer could be four millimeters in size, it could be eight millimeters in size, it could be 2.5 centimeters in size. One breast surgeon says a mastectomy, one breast surgeon says a lumpectomy. One oncologist says you will have chemotherapy, another says you won't. One rad onc says you'll have 29 days of radiation, but the second one says eight weeks. And the third one says you don't need radiation at all. I've got a clinical trial. And at the end of this, there are three hormonal drugs you can go on. Really? Really? Is this the best we have? Isn't one of these treatments better than the other? Which one is going to work best for me? What about patients like me? What worked for them? Unfortunately, this is the reality of cancer diagnosis and treatment today. You see, some cancers are difficult to see in our medical images. Some pathologies are hard to read. The elect average electronic health record is the size of a Harry Potter book. 8,000 new research papers are being, being written every day, and some say that if our oncologists need to read everything that they needed to read, they'd be reading 20 hours a day. But Watson is a cognitive computer, and Watson can help. You see, Watson reads, and he reads fast. So he can read my electronic health record, both the structured and the unstructured text. In the structured text, he'll find my name, my, demographic, my demographics, my clinical information. But in the unstructured text, he may find information in a doctor's note that could help in my diagnosis. It could be that my parents were smokers or that I took birth control pills in my 20s. And Watson reads images. We've trained Watson to read tens of thousands of images. We're teaching Watson to read what humans cannot see. Cognitive compu computing. Watson reads. He learns from what he reads. He never forgets what he reads. He doesn't get tired. And after he learns from what he reads, he makes a probable recommendation of what could happen. In the case of cancer, he helps your physician understand what your diagnosis is and what the treatment can be. Watson has read millions of research papers. He's read 300 medical journals, 200 medical textbooks. We've trained him on tens of millions of de-identified patient records, and the best oncologists in the world have trained Watson. We're making it, so whether you're in Boston or whether you're in New York City or whether you're in rural Montana or China, you can get the same advice on your cancer diagnosis and your treatment. And we can go further. With Watson for Genomics, if your cancer is advanced or a corner case, we can read in the genetic profile of your cancer and Watson can match it, match it with a drug. At University of North Carolina, we trained Watson for Genomics retrospectively on 1,000 patients. And we found in those 1,000 patients, Watson agreed with the oncologist 99% of the time. We were very happy Watson had learned. But in 1% of the time, which turned out to be 300 patients, Watson recommended a different medication. 
Was Watson right? Turns out Watson was right. Watson found medications that came out in 2013, 2014, and 2015 that could help these patients, but our overworked oncologists simply hadn't seen them. And in October, the Japanese Times wrote this. There was a woman who entered University of Tokyo. She was a 60-year-old woman last January, and she had an advanced form of leukemia. She went on chemotherapy, and the chemotherapy worked to attack her cancer cells, but she wasn't getting better. In August, the researchers decided to read her genetic profile into Watson. She had 1,000 gene mutations. What would have taken scientists two weeks to go through, Watson read in 10 minutes, and with cancer, time is important. Watson found an underlying secondary leukemia that could be treated with another drug. And the Jap Japanese Times reported the treatment started in September and she went home. What does all this mean? We're only at the very beginning. We have not read in every cancer. We have not read in every drug. But certainly, within the next decade, the next time my cancer is diagnosed, Watson will help my oncologist prescribe a treatment exactly for me, not for 10,000 mythical women somehow like me, but a treatment just for me. Artificial intelligence, sure, but we call Watson augmented intelligence. We call Watson the learned colleague because what we're doing is helping these hardworking physicians diagnose and treat. My entire working career, all I've wanted to do is make a difference in the intersection of healthcare and technology. And now me and the extraordinarily talented team at IBM Watson Health gets to do just that. We save lives and give hope to the world's most pressing healthcare challenges through the power of data in cognitive computing. Thank you.